Now, what happens if the characteristic equation has a real solution? Or b squared minus 4c is greater than 0? Well, clearly the imaginary component beta is going to go to 0. And we'll just be left with the real alpha. And if you plug that into the general solution, which we already saw, we'll see, of course, the beta is going to have sine of naught is naught, the cosine of naught is 1, and we're going to be simply left with a e to the alpha x. Now, there's a bit of a subtlety here. I said we always have to have two particular solutions in order to make the general solution. So in this case, it looks like the general solution only has one particular solution. So we have to do a bit of a sleight of hand. So remember, we're going to have two solutions to our characteristic equation, lambda plus and lambda minus. Except this time, they're both going to involve only a real component. So essentially, we're going to have alpha plus and alpha minus. And of course, there's going to be a plus zero, uh, i times zero, and this is going to be minus i times zero. The point here is that when we have real solutions, there are now, now actually two values for alpha, two real solutions, and no imaginary solutions. Whereas when we had complex roots, we had one real solution and two imaginary solutions. So the sleight of hand is, with this alpha here, we plug in both of our solutions, and that gives us two particular solutions. This is illustrated at the bottom of your screen. And this means that our general solution is going to be given by, so y general is our general solution, is a e to the alpha plus x, that's our first particular solution, and b e to the alpha minus x, that's our second particular solution. And as I said, alpha plus and lambda plus are the same, and so is alpha minus and lambda minus in this particular case. So that's when we have real roots. We have b squared minus 4c is greater than 0.